Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a briefing from www.central-mosque.com about the 15th of Sha'ban, or as in the Indian Pakistani culture we call it Shab-e Barat, Nisf Sha'ban, in Arabic Laylatul Bara'a, so on and so forth. There are many names, but the night of the 15th of Sha'ban, the middle night of Sha'ban. There's some history as to why I'm talking about this subject is because about 20, 21 years ago, when I first came to UK, uh, I think it was my first or second week in UK, uh, in the month of Sha'ban. And uh, I heard a talk in one of the local mosques. Um, and basically, um, this Maulana who was giving a talk, um, he started out his, uh, the subject of the 15th of Sha'ban with this verse of the Quran. Uh, this is from Surah Dukhan. In Arabic, I've only listed the first two verses. Uh, you can look it up, chapter 44. Verse number two to five. It says, Hamim, by the clear book, indeed, we sent it down during a blessed night. Indeed, we were to warn mankind on that night is made distinct every precise matter, every matter proceeding from us. Indeed, we were to send a messenger. So basically, what he's implying is it is a blessed night, which is the 15th of Sha'ban. On this night, decisions are made. And on this night, um, you know, basically, you know, some of the issues of your destiny and so on is is um, decided. So after this talk, uh, because I was astonished, I never heard, genuinely never heard of this commentary on this verse of the Quran. I'm not very knowledgeable, but, you know, I went and looked it up. I did not find this in any major tafsir of the Quran. Um, so I asked this Maulana, I said, look, I'm sorry, but how does this verse of the Quran apply to the 15th of Sha'ban? So he kind of laughed it off. So at that time, he was a, a, a new graduate uh, of a particular institute in the United Kingdom. Uh, over the last 20, 21 years in 15th of Sha'ban, I've heard this again and again and again across mosques in the United Kingdom, which later on I heard that one particular um, scholar of the United Kingdom is of the opinion that this applies to uh, Shab-e Bara, or late or 15th of Sha'ban. So the students and the graduates of these particular institutes, they keep on saying it again and again and again. So this scholar 20, 21 years ago, who said this verse uh, repeatedly with the respect, I've asked this uh, him of where did he learn it from? He didn't tell me. I came across this, the source of it from my own research. Nevertheless, uh, he has gone on and he's, he's teaching um, Sharia and different institutes, uh, yet he carries on saying it uh, when he knows very well that this is not in any major commentary of Quran whatsoever. This this verse has nothing to do with uh, with Shab-e Barat of the 15th of Sha'ban. The Quran very clearly was revealed in Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Very simple. Every Muslim knows that. Um, yet in the United Kingdom, for some reason, it's coming. Uh, and you will hear it again and again and again. You will hear it in the Juma Khutbah, you will hear it in the talks, you will hear scholars talking about this particular verse again and again to justify uh, shab e uh, You can look up in any classical tafsir you wish uh, throughout the history of Islam and there's no major uh, uh, commentator who's ever referred to these verses belonging to shab e Let's now proceed. That was my reason. Uh, nevertheless, scholars say it, knowing fully well that this is not the tafsir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. When it comes to shab e barat of the 15th of Sha'ban, <clears throat> it is the opinion of, of many scholars that there is there are doubts in most of the narrations of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pertaining to this event, pertaining to the 15th of Sha'ban. There, is, there are doubts about the authenticity of these ahadiths. However, there is an abundance of weak narrations, and this is where things diverge. Okay, there are loads and loads of weak narrations. So we have two different opinions of the scholar. Some of the scholars they say basically due to the nature of weakness in some of these narrations and the combination of the weak narrations, it leads to the, to the conclusion that basically there is some importance in this night because there's so many of them, and some of the weaknesses are not severe and so on. There's another group of scholars who say. All of these are weak, therefore they completely reject this. So depending on which scholar you follow, it is up to you. Everybody accepts that there are doubts about the authenticity. One group says you combine all of these weak narrations and some of these narrations are not weak enough to be fabricated. 
So combining them, looking at the nature of weakness, there is some importance in this night. Others reject them entirely and completely. It is up to you which group of scholars you wish to follow. Let's now work backwards about certain events affiliated with the 15th of Sha'ban. Number one, there are no authentic ahadith of Rasulullah fasting exclusively on the 15th. Therefore, there is almost a consensus of opinion of the scholars that fasting on the 15th of Sha'ban is not Sunnah. So, in one, if someone fasts exclusively on the 15th thinking it is Sunnah, it is not valid. However, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Aisha radiallahu has narrated in Sahih Muslim, that he fasted a lot in Sha'ban. In fact, he fasted the most outside of the month of Ramadan in Sha'ban. Also, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his close friend, advised him to do these three things which he will never give up until he dies. Fasting three months of each month, praying duha salah and going to sleep after witr. So fasting these three days of month, so basically this is, this is fasting in the middle of the month, the 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar month in Islam. So of course fasting on the 15th falls solely in this in this general meaning of fasting on the 13th 14th and 15th so if someone is in a habit mashallah many brothers and sisters that are in the habit of following the sunnah fasting on the 13th 14th and 15th alhamdulillah that's fine and the 15th happens to fall on that that's okay some of them are generally in the habit of fasting in Sha'ban and they happen to fast on the 15th that's fine but i'm talking about exclusively fasting on the with the intention that it is sunnah on the 15th there's no such thing in islam So remember, we're working backwards. We started out with the fasting, and now we get to the point where some people, especially in our uh, Indian Pakistani culture, people visit the graveyard on the 15th of Sha'ban. <coughs> there is a hadith narrated uh, by Imam Tirmidhi uh, by Aisha radiallahu anha, where she followed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he, you know, he, she found out he was visiting the graveyard. There is uh, serious question marks about the authenticity of this hadith. However, the scholars have said it was a general practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to visit the graveyard um, in, in in certain parts of the night, particularly when he was uh, visiting Aisha radiallahu anha, one of his wives. Uh, but putting all of this stuff together, the ulama they say there are no restrictions or conditions and no exclusivity of day and night of visiting the graveyard. We should visit the graveyard often as it reminds us of death, but it is not exclusive to do so on the 15th of Sha'ban. So if someone visits the, fifth, in the graveyard on the 15th of Sha'ban, I have to do this because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it, then no, it is not Sunnah. If someone happens to visit the graveyard on the 15th or any other night or any other day, that's absolutely fine. This is nothing exclusive on the 15th of Sha'ban at all. Now finally, so what should you do? So as, as I said, let's go back to the slide. Basically, there's an abundance of, of weak narrations. And so there are two groups of scholars. One say we combine these weak narrations and there's some importance in this night. And some say this is to be totally rejected. So there's no, there's no fasting on the 15th exclusively as sunnah. So what should you do if you happen to find yourself in that night? There is no special salah in this night that you need to do. There's nothing in hadith says do this salah this many times. There's no special act of worship so basically so nobody can say that you know do read the 15 years of the quran four times or do the dhikr 1000 times in sunnah there's no absolutely no such thing there's no specific rituals when i was growing up growing up in pakistan not knowing any better we used to go to the local masjid they used to give us this printout and used to have basically read read the third kalima 29 times read this 45 times and hundreds of times and this and that and we used to sit there and go through this pamphlet and complete this is no such thing whatsoever if you do follow the group of scholars who believe that there is some significance in this night then you can follow the sunnah and perform any individual acts individual good deeds with acts with sincerity and make dua for for yourself for your family and your friends and inshallah because you are following the opinion of the scholars who believe that there's something significant in this night inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, basically bless you and will have mercy on you if you choose to not to do anything on this night then you're also following the opinion of some some great scholars who believe that there's nothing significant in this night whatsoever it isn't it isn't a an, an issue of sect or anything like that uh, there are many scholars 
belonging to you know different different schools or something who have disagreed with this knight some believe that there was some significance in it some believe there wasn't so there's no reason to argue about it if you believe if you but have an intention to make taqlid have the intention to follow the group of scholars so if you follow the group of scholars who believe that a combination of weak narrations leads credence to this that's absolutely fine you will find uh, i will put a link in underneath this video you can click on it you can read the opinion uh, of maulan fadlur rahman azami hafizahullah ta'ala who's written a book on it and he's of this opinion if you're of the opinion that there's, there's all of this needs to be you know because they're weak hadiths and they're so weak that they are all to be rejected then there's sheikh bin baz uh, rahimahullah ta'ala mufti rashid ahmed um, Ludhianwi rahimahullah ta'ala, they're all of this opinion that is to be rejected. So make the taqlid of whichever scholars you suit, read their research. I'll put the link here. Uh, and insha'Allah, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.